thanks for joining me in another video. A few months ago, I did a video about Tesla superchargers and how they work. Today, I wanted to go over 800 volt charging and what it means for the future of EVs. If you're a first time EV owner or considering buying an EV, don't let this stress you out. You don't need to know this info in detail to own an electric car, but if you're interested, then keep on watching. There are many fast chargers out there and a vast majority of the public DC fast chargers are built for cars with a 400 volt cell architecture, as that's been the standard for many years. These newer fast chargers which support 800 volt charging have started to pop up all over the world with station providers like Electrify America and EVgo here in the US, as well as Ionity and Circle K overseas. So what does this increased charging voltage actually mean and does it matter? Before we jump into it, let's do a quick recap on what a vehicle charger actually is. When most people hear car charger, they think of the cable that came with their car or the one that's mounted on their wall at home. In reality, these are called EVSEs or electric vehicle supply equipment. These AC power units are nothing more than a relay and a very basic computer inside. All this simply does is tell the car you can take 32 amps safely. And then the car says, okay, close the circuit when it's ready to start charging. The circuit closes and that's about it on the outside of the car. All the magic is actually taking place inside of the car. Inside is what's called an onboard charger, which is typically rated anywhere between six to 20 kilowatts on modern EVs. This converts the AC power to DC power, which goes into the battery pack. These onboard chargers can be rather big, heavy, and expensive. DC fast chargers perform this exact same function as the onboard charger, but on a much larger scale. These large cabinets contain AC to DC converters that charge your battery directly. When charging at a DC fast charger, the power bypasses the onboard charger and goes straight into the battery pack. This allows you to charge your car very quickly, and obviously it's not feasible to carry around something this large in your car. So that's a quick rundown on what a charger actually is. This video will be mainly focusing on the CCS standard as 800 volt CHAdeMO is very uncommon, and Tesla doesn't have 800 volt chargers. So what does 400 volt and 800 volt mean for a battery? Time for brief physics lessons on battery configuration. Each individual lithium ion battery cell has a nominal voltage around 3.7 volts. By placing these cells in a series, the voltage is effectively added. So if we put two of these together, we'll get 7.4 volts. And with three cells, it will be 11.1 volts. Connecting these cells in parallel gets you your capacity or amp hours. So on a battery pack level, changing from 400 volts to 800 volts is mostly a change in the way the batteries are individually connected. Every battery pack is built with a nominal voltage as well. This voltage can go up or down depending on the state of charge in your car. Even though your car has a nominal voltage of 400 volts, when your battery is low, that number will be lower until it's charged back up. Having a higher voltage pack can allow automakers to make bus bars and other components physically thinner and may allow them to require less cooling. Additionally, this can allow charging cables to be slimmer as well. At a charging station, you can quickly tell the chargers apart by their maximum output power. In the US, typically a 150 kilowatt charger will be rated for 400 volts, while 350 kilowatt chargers are able to output up to 800 volts. There are likely differences, but it seems like this is a standard that most companies have landed on. These DC fast chargers are designed to output a full range of voltages to safely charge electric vehicles. If you arrive with the very low battery and plug-in, the charger will accommodate and adjust accordingly. The 350 kilowatt chargers will also drop down the voltage to work properly with the 400 volt battery pack. Compatibility was built in from the start. But what about the other way around? What if I bring a Kia EV6 or Porsche Taycan, which is built on an 800 volt architecture to one of these 400 volt chargers? Well, luckily the automakers of the world have planned for that. Inside of all 800 volt cars around the world are resonant converters which boost up the voltage. These take the 400 volt DC power, which is provided by the charger, and then increases the voltage so that it can charge the battery pack. These boosters make the vehicle compatible with all the different chargers available, assuming the connector is correct. There are two drawbacks to the booster. The first is that you do lose charging efficiency making this conversion. Luckily, it looks like it's a small loss as these are typically around 95% efficient. The second is that the booster has a maximum rating and it can vary by car. When we were charging the Kia V6 here on the review video, we were able to get 170 kilowatts off a 400 volt charger. So at least in this case of Kia, you're still able to get a pretty high charging rate. Power converters and boosters are very common in all electric vehicles. There are AC to DC converters for changing over from line power to charge the battery pack. There are DC to AC converters for the motor system. 
There are even DC to DC converters for low voltage items like lights and computers. Adding on a booster really isn't that big of a deal. It's just one extra part. Also, AC charging is only minorly affected. The onboard charger is just built slightly differently to accommodate the higher voltage. There are a few automakers that have 800 volt architecture, including Kia, Hyundai, Porsche, and Audi. The Hyundai Motor Group has the electric global modular platform, which allows for 800 volt charging capability. This platform is made exclusively for electric vehicles and includes a battery motor and power electric system. So far, Tesla has not introduced a car or charger which supports an 800 volt architecture. Currently, their chargers are fully capable of charging at speeds of up to 250 kilowatts at peak. Probably one of the most important technologies for making the cables thinner is the introduction of liquid-cooled cables. With 800 volt charging and the addition of liquid-cooled cables together should make heavy and difficult to use cables light and easier to handle. For example, this is a Tesla supercharging cable. It's slightly thicker than my mobile connector, which is only capable of 8 kilowatts, but it can charge my car at 250 kilowatts. Comparing to Tesla's urban superchargers, those could only output 72 kilowatts and yet the cable was significantly thicker. An additional benefit is for people in hotter climates where it's been observed that the car would slow the charging rate if the cable or charging handle got too hot. These aren't 350 kilowatts, but if we look at Electrify America, they also use liquid cool cables, but as of right now, it doesn't appear to be translating to thinner cables. Maybe in the future, I'll be able to charge my car with USB-C. By the way, if you have a 400 volt vehicle and the charging stations are not busy, make sure to plug in on a 150 kilowatt charger and not the 350 kilowatt one. It is charging etiquette to leave that space for those vehicles that can support that voltage. Of course, if that's the only spot left, then you can charge. 800 volt charging has benefits, but just because it's a bigger number doesn't necessarily mean it's better right now. The benefits of an 800 volt charge are less heat and a little less weight on the car, plus the charging cables can be thinner. Also, it may make the system more efficient due to a reduction in heat loss. However, 800 volt systems are pricier and they are not necessary right now for everyday consumer EVs. The future state of the technology around EVs is changing rapidly and with newer cars introducing higher C ratings in a few years, it may be necessary. On the other hand, larger commercial vehicles like buses or trucks with huge batteries may benefit more from 800 volts today. Even with the low C rating, they can often need a ton of amps. We could be seeing more manufacturers in the future introducing 800 volt technology in their EVs. As a side note, the MCS or megawatt charging system was just announced. It can support voltages of up to 1.25 kilovolts and 3000 amps. This is the standard that will be used for large vehicles like buses and semis going forward but this new charging connector doesn't affect the consumer space. As of now, don't worry about the bigger number and choosing an EV solely because of 800 volt charging. Though we look forward to new advances in technology and what shifts that may bring to EVs. If you're new to EVs, make sure to check out my EV 101s video, which goes into a short overview of EVs and how to charge them. I also have an EV 101 infographic that displays info on levels of charging. I have now updated it to include 800 volts. You can find this and other resources on my webpage at kaizev.com. If you have an EV I can review, email me at info at kaizev.com. Thanks for spending time with me today. Make sure to subscribe for more EV content and follow me on social media at kaizev and kaiztessa. Kai is my dog. That's all for now, and happy charging.